Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, Tesla just reported earnings and we're going to get into that. And I'll just go ahead and tell you, they did what they had to do. But some, you know, Bitcoin holders are going to be very upset at what Elon Musk actually did to achieve this somewhat soft landing in the earnings because it was a dismal quarter, just like most companies are having, right? Remember, the bars on the ground, there's nothing up here to jump over. All you got to do is step over. That's the the theme of this earnings season, as we can tell, okay? And so, you know, I'm going to start with something funny, two things, actually. I get a kick out of these kind of memes, but so, you know, U.S. Senate votes to move ahead on chip bill, compete with China, and you got Pelosi up there rubbing her hands together because she owns a crap ton of NVIDIA. And then, of course, Netflix CEO watching the stock go up and reporting a loss of 970,000 subscribers. And boy, if you look, I don't understand why those shareholders are so happy because this right here just doesn't look good, does it? This is Netflix revenue growth quarterly year over year percentage. And back since October of 2019, it has just been on a straight tra trajectory, pretty much down, right? It just poured 8.6% and people are cheering. But hey, maybe the ads will save them. I don't know. And so, yeah, if I was the CEO of Netflix, I would have been stunned just like that and smiling today going, holy cow, my stock's still going up after losing that many customers. Yay! You know, uh, but going into, you know, Tesla's uh, earnings, let's just go ahead and say this now. It went up as soon as it came out. The stock is trading flat right now. That's all it had to do. I don't know, you know, hopefully Elon Musk is not upset by somebody on the call because you know he's not about trying to cozy up the analysts or anybody else and caring what they think. So we'll see what he does on the call. But right now what you're looking at is the earnings per share beat. Uh, they got brought in $2.27 versus $1.81. Revenue at $16.93 billion versus $17.1 billion expected. So almost there. You know, Automotive gross uh, margin came in at 27.9%, down from 32.9% last quarter and 28.4% a year ago. Obviously impacted by inflation and more com competition for battery cells and other components that go into the electric vehicles. And one thing to look out for, and this might be why you see it sell off as soon as they came out with this. For the Bitcoin holders, I'm so sorry. He sold, or Tesla sold 75% of their Bitcoin uh, for around, I believe, they actually brought in somewhere in the neighborhood of, hold on, I got it right here, $936 million uh, with that. And understand, though, there was actually a change in cash flow of $847 million. So without that sale, they actually would have been cash flow negative. And we'll get more of that in just a minute. But to go over the key metrics, you can see right here, obviously vehicle deliveries, because obviously with Shanghai being shut down, that was a mess. You can see quarter four, quarter one right there, kind of plateaued out, big drop there. We expect the next quarter to be higher, obviously, uh, with all these new factories that got open. And then going over operating cash flow and free cash flow, you can see that's obviously been heading down uh, since fourth quarter of 2021. And then if we head over to... And then if we head over to net income and adjusted EBITDA, uh, you can see it was on a nice trajectory up. Uh, this year, obviously, has been a rough year for them and everybody else. So we are actually heading down, as you can see, right there on second quarter 2022. And by the way, if you get anything out of this, please hit that like and subscribe button for me. I really appreciate it. Think about sharing the video. As always, guys, thank you for all your support. And so you got to understand they did what they had to do, right? I know Elon Musk has been quoted as saying he would never sell Bitcoin. Well, he did, 75% of it. Still holding a little. But they did what they had to do because the cash flow was going out the door because of these new factories. And Elon Musk said they are cash-guzzling behemoths, I think is how he's been, he's been quoted, right? And it takes a lot to build a factory, start it up, get it going with all the employees and everything else. And so, you know, that's what they had to do. They still promised them like 50% growth in their vehicle sales and stuff like that so that's good right but again the second quarter is going to be rough for everybody you know they still had uh, to convert a lot of that money into a, the u.s dollar took a hit on that as well and so it is what it is they didn't have to come in and kill it nobody expected them to kill it and you know they dressed it up the best they could and so here it is right and people are thinking well everything else from here on has got to be good so all they had to do was in golf terms hit par or make par right and so that's where we're on that you see today market's still up driving hard especially what growth stocks the ones that have been beating down the most what's still happening there's no doubt about it 
You still got the short sellers getting crushed right now. I mean, just getting crushed is what's happening. And you can see right here, since July now is shaping up to be uh, as bad as June of 2021 for them as this market rally continues. And another thing you got to think about here is where everybody's at or been at, right? This is the Bank of America survey they always do. These firms uh, manage around $800 billion, about 300 of them they actually interview. And you can see, most people are in cash, stable utilities, healthcare, commodities. They were short on equities and tech, obviously, uh, coming into this. And you can see a lot of money I showed you uh, yesterday is rotating back into tech. And another thing to think about, too, is, and this is usually what happens, these Wall Street analysts, which are always behind, you saw this already, they start downgrading, right? This normally is a contrarian indicator, which means, not saying this is showing the bottom, but it always tells you you're getting closer to a bottom when these guys start doing major downgrades. I showed you a chart yesterday of how many they're doing. They're all jumping on board, pounding these stocks down when they should have been downgrading uh, in January. That's what they should have been doing, but they didn't do anything in the first quarter, really. And so now all of a sudden they're, you know, pounding the drums saying, oh, we got to downgrade these stocks uh, during earnings here, right before earnings. Well, you know, how about that? And so you can see where we're at with the line right there I'm drawing for you. We've hit this multiple times. Again, doesn't mean the bottom's in at all. It just means you're definitely always closer to a bottom when these guys right here, these analysts, are starting to downgrade all these stocks. And so it's just something else to keep an eye on. And the video I got coming out tomorrow, I'm going to go ahead for those who are still with me here. You got to see this video because, again, I don't push my beliefs on anybody. I present the information to you as unbiased as I can. We're all grown adults here, and you make your own decision, right? And I always ask you for any feedback you got or any data you want to send me, send it. I'd love to see it, okay? And I'm telling you, there's a good chance, just saying, that tech has already bottomed. Not the S&P, tech, all right? And I'm going to present the data to you that I found today and researched all day long going through these charts and graphs and everything else and let you make up your own mind. And again, I'm not saying the bottom's in at all because when you see this video, you'll see what I'm talking about while I'm saying that. But man, it's uh, it's pretty interesting. Let's just say that. It makes a good argument for it. And so we'll see. I'll let you decide, but make sure you watch that video all the way through because it's a lot, of, a lot of stuff I've been working on for you. And so I think I finally got it complete and looking forward to actually presenting it to you tomorrow and get your opinion on things. A lot of you guys are smart. Some of you are traders. Some of you are just long-term investors, but... Uh, I think we have a pretty smart community here, and so I always enjoy your feedback. So that's where we're at. Tesla, boom, made par. That's all they needed to do if this rally will continue, because obviously next week you got a lot bigger earnings coming in. But you can see, man, I keep, how many, how long have I been saying this? What, 10, 14 days, 10 to 14 days, that you can just feel that these institutions want to push this higher. And I will say, because I looked at the volume, the volume doesn't convince me. That's another thing you'll see in the video tomorrow. But, you know, that doesn't mean, if you think about it, we got the Fed meeting coming up. Was it 20, 26, 28, somewhere in there? You got the GDP on the 27th, right? So we can definitely see them pushing us up all the way into that. Plus, you got Apple earnings right around that same time range, uh, Microsoft. And so you can see them pushing us up into that. And then, of course, what? Selling the news, maybe? Could happen, right? As they build back up their short positions. Absolutely could happen, but think about it. If GDP comes in, not negative, but zero or above, right, which means we're not in a recession, and then the Fed only does 75 basis points, which is probably what they're going to do, right, and then there's no meeting in August, which means most likely probably won't do a rate hike, okay, and people think, you know, inflation has peaked, maybe it has, maybe it hadn't, but think about that setup. That's a big setup, and whether anybody likes it or not, Again, the market's like, heck with this, let's go. Because remember, they're not gambling with their money, they're gambling with your money and my money. So it's real easy to gamble versus when you get your own money and you're like, man, I don't know about this. But you know, that's what I'm saying. Don't be shocked if things continue higher. Okay, don't be surprised by that. Then again, if we get next week and they freaking just totally sell us off and we start going uh, you know, down so fast and make sure your head snap back and feel like you got whiplash. Don't be surprised with that either because, you know, these short sellers, they get burned all right, but they always come back and they'll reload the boat. And so we just got to figure out when they're going to do that. But just want to present that to you and let me know what you think in the comments. Hit the like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it, guys, as always. And I'll see you tomorrow with that video I just told you about. Good night. Yeah.